Among other things, sympathy gave rise to a call for justice for the murder of makeup artist Ijoma Nike, who was killed by two siblings, Chamaka Ifezwe and her brother, Chukwemeka Ifezwe, on the 11th of November 2020. A court in Enugu North Magistrate District had ordered that the two siblings be remanded in Enugu Correctional Center. They were later arraigned for abduction, murder, as well as forcing the deceased to drink a poisonous substance believed to be acid. Okay, this is Maryland Axis at Okilo Bus Stop, Enugu, where the body of Ijoma Wike was found. This spot right here was where she was found practically lifeless. And I think that the courts, the courts should take action. In fact, let justice be done. Because in these days, if justice is not taken, if justice is not taken, as in it's not seriously taken, other people that will be going for outside work, they won't be able to go, go for it. In fact, if you call for somebody to come and do um, um, house service for you, the person won't be able to do it. So I wish that courts, the court should take strict justice so that her soul will rest in peace. Oh, it's really so this happening and really very disappointing to know that someone can actually go that far to the extent of taking someone else's life because of a man. Uh, I mean, the first time I heard the story, uh, I was really heartbroken. Uh, I just pray that the security operatives uh, try as much as they can to make sure that uh, they get on top of that very situation. I believe that at this very point in time that the girl has been apprehended uh, the, and also the culprits, the people who all participated in the murder of that innocent girl. Keke ke si bo mado maka love maka to work e boko work e ofu work e we bo mado onani oye bu for nine good mosu mo ya bi chichacha cha ya zigido road to something years e we bo e maka love man work e ju e ju that the woman na ba mari a hard heartless nda e ko esu bi ni me ha we ne che che no kwa mado ibe e ka na ebu ko bi bo e we wuru pi o wo ofu no wuru o the happy is very pathetic one and uh, but as police people will do what we have to do and ensure that justice is not just done said to be done but will be seen to have been done too uh, is a case that happened on the 11th of november 2020 where it was initially reported at the station here in enugu as a case of missing person mm -hmm. and in the course of investigation we realized that there was more to it when another alarm came so the case was moved uh, following a petition that was written to the commission of police it was now moved to anti-kidnapping unit of the command where it was thoroughly investigated and along the line suspects were arrested uh, the first being chiamaka and his uh, brother who eventually chuku a maker who have been charged to court as we speak. Now the whole thing draws on the fact that Chiamaka, if it's one the the disease victim allegedly were having the same person as their boyfriend. Now coincidentally the victim never knew that uh, one Chidebere was boyfriend to his her own boyfriend as her then is also boyfriend to the suspect in this case and lo and behold she is into makeup and now for whatever reason this lady and her brother conspired in that sense she now had to invite her that she was going to make up a friend of her hers rather and that was going to happen in her house at independence layout so now the on that fateful day being the 11th of november she as the investigation revealed, she was driven to her office at New Heaven by the boyfriend, who is also an older friend, lover to the suspect in this case. Now, she, when the young man dropped her off in her place of work, he told the young man that he was going to go for a job, an outside work, so to speak, and being to the place of the suspect, Chiamakana. And eventually, he, she went to the job. And while she was going, she also communicated her lover in that sense to say, look, I'm going to this job, is here, I'm there now, I'm this. 
but the whole thing came down to the fact as investigation revealed that she got to the place the venue where she was invited for the work and she the lady the suspect kept her she sat waiting for the supposed friend of the suspect who was supposed to come so she could make up in their sitting room and waited and waited that was not happening she was in the kitchen according to her preparing food and now she told her younger brother who was the one that when she alighted she got to the venue she had to the house who took her in and then now in order to her younger brother to give her a drink she had prepared she, she kept for her and lo and behold that investigation revealed that the drink was actually dropped you know it was something poisonous substance and all that and lo and behold she refused taking that drink initially and she was being persuaded you know cajoled subtly to say take take is your drink is this is not that at some point she said no at that point she was not drinking and all that and eventually she succeeded in making her take that drink not that she willingly wanted you know this kind of thing you're in someone's house please drink that is just for me to welcome and entertain you and she took the drink and lo and behold she started feeling funny in the house and at that moment when she realized it was serious investigation revealed that she also sent a message to her colleague in the office to say look what looks like a dying declaration i don't know how i'm feeling what they gave the drink they gave to me here yeah, i don't think it's making me feel somehow then along the line she eventually felt was completely down to the extent that the second spot suspect chuku emeka he faced away now came down from the upstairs you came to the sitting room you saw somebody and called the attention of the sister to say look this lady you left in the house is, is she drunk she's feeling tipsy she's not feeling fine according to him and lo and behold, she said she's a friend, she's fine, the she's is that, and the rest of that, it got to the point that she was completely out. And what she did next was the brother provided, as investigation revealed, provided his metric scar mm -hmm. that was used to now convey her. That was in the night. The whole of this thing started around seven because that was what the communication, the disease, mm -hmm. told the boyfriend that, look, I'll be going. To do that, that uh, work by seven o'clock in the evening. And lo and behold, she was now taken to where we refer to as Ugwaji, somewhere a little bit outskirt, a little bit outskirt of the main city. And then, her body was left there. Not just was the body left there. The physician revealed that they now poured a substance suspected to be acid. Mm -hmm that you know is I think a raw one was poured on her so beyond the fact that she was poisoned that was poured on her and even the taxi and all that had helped in the whole of this tried to obliterate every form of trace that could lead to you having committed this crime or you didn't commit the crime and even the phone number she used to contact the victim that is now dead to say we have a job come and do this job lucky enough the victim had also shared with the boyfriend to say this was the number of the person that called me and said we are going to do a job like this. It was traced in the whole of the investigation, intelligence gathering. We now realize that that number was actually traced to, his, to her younger brother, Pascal. Pascal was the one that went to buy the number for her, registered, you know what most people would have done, registered without knowing and gave to the sister. Because when I said, go and buy. And lo and behold, that was how we got to the story of a victim of this nature who had gone out to do a legitimate job. A means of love, survival and livelihood and lo and behold, that was like death. Somebody deliberately or consciously and intentionally decided to do away with the life of another person. It's as bad as that. And as you know, <coughs> matter is already in court. <coughs> and by the special grace of God, we believe that justice will be done. Bringing the perpetrators to book will not only mean a lot to the family of the diseased, but also to well-meaning Nigerians who have taken to social media with the hashtag Justice for Ijoma. The house was asked to give that 
a wine. According to Jamaica, today is a bottle of wine. But we don't know what actually it was, but they didn't tell us. But the half boy went back and told the Jamaica that the girls refused to drink it. And according to him, because he's not an ego, but I think it's from a quiet one of us. According to what he said, and I said, Auntie said, No, this Auntie, she must drink it, she must drink it. And then she came and asked the boy to go and administer whatever she wants to administer to the girl. At that point, the two brothers were there in the house. But according to what we heard, because we are not police, I'm just a lawyer and I'm working with what the police told me. According to what the police told us, that Auntie did not After drugging her, the eldest brother came and said, Why is this girl wriggling on the chair? What happened to her chair? In Ibo language, where did you get this girl from? Rupia Kweba. And that was the fact we said it too. Even though police faulted him, they were asking, why don't you just, why didn't you uh, mandate your sister to tell you where she brought the girl from? But he said after just saying that, he went upstairs again and started sleeping, or whether he said he went out. Then from there, they said they took the girl to God knows where. And then we dumped her there and we called her sick on her. Probably the sultan they gave her to keep and started destroying her system. So according to all the time they came from the statement given so far, the security man, the kind-hearted security man, saw her shouting for help. According to his say, was a faint voice screaming, help, 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 around the um, Okilo bus stop. He came and said there's nothing he could do. He sat for a uh, tricycle to convey the girl to hospital. Around 2 a.m., couldn't see any tricycle. So he went, got a bit of a bucket of water, fetched from the stream, poured on the girl, gave the girl a little to drink. There's nothing he could do. He went out in search of anybody to help or any other security man to help him. So by the time he came back around 4 a.m., the girl had sleeping on the boat. Now, according to him again, then he left. Whether to eight years, uh, anti terrorism, near that was too. Probably to seek for help, whether to carry the body to mortuary or wherever. Because he said that when he came back, he did not see the body at that to kill again. They have taken the body elsewhere, and that was all he knew. He said when he saw that the girl is dead around 4 a.m. of that fateful day. He started looking for Keke, what we call Keke, and a tricycle to see whether he can move the body to Montreal or the appropriate police station to report. And the nearest police station to that of Kilo is ATS, anti terrorism, anti terrorism squad. They are located at Maryland. So when he got there to see that the German naked, the body of the German, where the only was lying where he left, he discovered that the body of the German naked was no longer there. The next thing he said, he saw it at the express. Because we want to find out what happened, some persons around that area again came up again. That they, uh, they saw um, local government staff came and buried the body by the roadside. They have come to local government, their health department. They confirmed that the one that buried the body. I think they gave police a written statement as regards this. And I think they also made statement at the police station as what they knew about the body and why they buried the body. Because according to them, the acid poured on the e German naked had totally destroyed all parts of our body. That it was impossible to remove the whole corpse. Want to pick her things, call that the hand has them back from the body to the acid body. Following the arraignment on the 3rd of February 2021, the case was adjourned to the 24th of February. Tracy Dominic, Eastern Report TV News, Enugu.